awesome. So this is Ann Ray coming to you from San Francisco, California. And I have Lindsay Arnett, darn it, <laughs> coming to you <laughs> from um, Vancouver. Yeah. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canadian yeah. artist, painter specifically. And I asked her to, uh, she just actually just enrolled in the semester. But when I, when we did our application call, um, Lindsay shared a story with me that I hear way too much. So in summary, um, I won't get into all the gory details, but Lindsay's very, pretty successful painter. She um, supports her family and does pretty well. But unfortunately, um, there is at least one gallery that took $30,000 uh, and all of your inventory and they went bankrupt. So she's gonna have a hard time seeing that. So she is very successful with the, within the art establishment um, model. But as I teach artists, um, one of two things can often happen. So even if you do find success, one of two things will, will very often happen to the artist. Number one, they'll fall out of favor. That means another artist who has more marketable work will come along and displace you, just like merchandise in a store, you know, it doesn't always sell forever. Um, the other thing that can happen is um, the gallery can go bankrupt or go to business and or just not honor their terms. So the informal statistic on the street is that since the recession in around 2008, about half of the galleries within the United States have closed their doors. So it's not a good model to bank on um, in the long run. So that's just, that's my perspective. But what, I say that all the time. I wanna hear Lindsay's perspective. So did I describe accurately what happened or correct me if I'm wrong? Sorry, you Sorry. totally cut out that. Oh, so with Lindsay, I, I just asked if I described what happened to you accurately or um, it, when you said that you lost a pretty chunk, pretty sizable chunk of money and inventory. Is that what happened? Yes, and the gallery has not officially gone bankrupt. However, they are saying that is what's happening and their house is on foreclosure and all that. So what is happening and this has happened actually with um, seven of the eight galleries that I have been represented by um, yeah so what a lot of artists don't know is they store sure. artists galleries and gallery owners struggle mightily yeah and actually in speaking to um, a debt collector about the situation there, what they said was, oh yeah, you know, the galleries, they rob Paul to pay Peter or however it goes. So it's like even the debt collectors know that this is a common thing. Which is sad because it almost gives them permission to steal because essentially yeah. that's what they did. They stole. That money never belonged to them and they've obviously spent mm -hmm. it. That inventory of that belong, belonged to you, it never, never belonged to them. It's you, obviously consigned it, never belonged to them in the first place. It's not like a store that buys inventory and then they own it. Um, that's not the arrangement. They don't, so I'm sorry to hear that. What I wanna ask you now, Lindsay, is I want you to think about the lessons that you learned from the experience. And um, what would you say is the number one lesson that you learned from this whole experience? So many and so whatever pops so in your head first. Just, just whatever pops in your head first. What, whatever you think is like, whatever pops into your head yeah, first. So, um, so I think the biggest lesson would be um, to stand up for myself. I was such a pushover at the beginning and I allowed this to happen month after month, year after year. And I should have, um, you know, been strong enough to say no more I'm not giving you any more art until you pay what you owe I'm not doing commissions um, so I think that's that's been my biggest growth is just um, standing up for myself and saying enough is enough good for you but, uh, yeah and I've actually turned down commissions where I've told the galleries that if you want a commission I'm happy to do it as long as my 50% is in my hand before the commission leaves my studio and I've not had a single 
Royal Commission since then. <laughs> oh, mm. <laughs> good for you. So number one, your number one lesson is that you've learned to stand up for yourself and to draw very clear and healthy and specific boundaries around how you do business. That's fantastic. That's something that you yeah. will carry forward now. So when what's the second biggest lesson that pops into your head from this experience? To have my own contract, um, I actually, I called the FBI. A friend of mine suggested that I do that. I love it. <laughs> Take a huge chunk. Um, you can hire a lawyer and sue. Uh, that costs a lot of money up front, but the FBI, this is their job. So I called and um, they gave me some very, very specific need to help. And of course, sorry, my cat is like, <laughs> of course, um, I didn't have any of these things in my contract and the galleries didn't have it in theirs either. Um, so I, I now know the specific things that need to be written in there. Um, do you want me to share what they are? Yeah. What did the FBI tell you it needs to be okay. in specifically? So, um, so the galleries have their own contract, but an artist can also have their own contract that the gallery signs. Yes. Is, I tell people that all the time. <laughs> Yes, you need to have that if you're going this route. So what the FBI agent said is, um, what happens when payments are late? How like how far does it go before you do something? Are you going to charge interest? Are you going to hire a debt collector or a lawyer? Action that you're going to take. Right. Um, you have to have the, the terms other and the conditions. So you spell out what's going to happen if you don't play by the rules. What's going to happen? What's going to what's going to go down? So very good. What else did they say? Um, what uh, do you want to know when paintings sell? Are you, when do you want your inventory updates, sales updates? Because I promise you, if the galleries are struggling, they're not going to tell you when your art is selling. <laughs> and that's what happened with this last gallery. I went almost a year of them telling me nothing selling, nothing selling. Then I find out they've sold over 60 grand of art and I haven't received any of it. Wow. Which is you're supporting your family with this and yeah so Lindsay supports so Lindsay's um husband um takes care of your child and you you stay at home dad and so they not only stole from Lindsay they stole from her husband and her little girl and I think that's when I really stepped up like my mama bear came out and I'm like I have a mortgage I have food to put on the table for my daughter like this is not okay cool. Yeah. Um, and actually, I some of the galleries have gotten like personal. Like if they pay me a small portion of what they owe me, and they think that that's enough. To them, that same story. I have a mortgage. I have food to put on the table for my daughter. And they, this one gallery owner said, "Well, how much food does your daughter need?" What? And they've paid me a nice chunk so that she gonna. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And it's, it's the moral, it's the value of it. Like, if you owe me this money, you pay it, you know? That's it's right. That's what you have. It. Okay. So what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, would you mm -hmm. email me the specifics that yes. the FBI agent suggested you put into your contract? And then we can yeah. share that yeah. with other artists so that they can review their contracts and take a look at some of these suggestions. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So this number two lesson just sounds like understanding that you have every right and you should absolutely have a contract. So contracts are not yeah. one way. You know, they have their terms. The gallery yeah. has their terms and conditions, which they have every right to, um, you know, to, to enforce. And you have every right to do the same thing because they don't own your inventory. They don't own anything. So that's great. Now, what would you say? Like, what's the number three lesson that just kind of pops into your head from this whole experience? Um, I think to be open-minded uh, because I the impression that the only way to become a successful artist was to have gallery representation. So I think that's why when I realized I was done in this system that I was so heartbroken. Um, I wasn't considering that there was even an alternative. So I'd say just to be open-minded and if something doesn't work, there's another road. Right. So you just have to look for it and listen. Answers are already inside you. And trust yourself. Really trust yourself. 
and uh, stand up for yourself. I, uh, when I moved to San Francisco to be a full-time artist, I, shortly after that, I actually fired all of the representatives that I worked with. And it was more, uh, some of it because they were dirty, rotten scoundrels, like you've described. That was one of the reasons. <laughs> um, and you know who you are. You're listening. I know you listen to me. You son of a gun. Um, and then uh, the other reason was just simply because I had created value so far above and beyond my art that a gallery just wasn't even equipped and an art representative wasn't even equipped to sell the program that I had created, which is way more than just painting. So, oh, and you're cutting there's, out again. There's, so there's just, lots of, there's just lots of limitations with the gallery model. They sell a very limited value proposition and you can create much more value for your target market outside of that structure. So, um, and that's what I'm hoping yeah. that you will be able to create for yourself, Lindsay, by being a semester, a student in the making art, making money semester. That's my intention that you'll be able to create value way above and beyond your art. And you don't have to worry as much about these things, but it does take time to build a business. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, you will. That's right. So that's it's just just by the way you said that you can tell your attitude is really clear, decisive, and positive. That's the best indication that an artist is going to be successful. You can tell Lindsay's determined. She's had enough of this shit. She's going to make it right. <laughs> so <laughs> there's nothing. Getting pissed, getting really pissed off, is actually can be a beautiful opening to a whole new way of being whole new set of opportunities so congratulations on getting pissed off Lindsay now what I'd like you to do is mm -hmm. if you could give other artists one piece of parting advice what would you tell them to do oh gosh um I'd say just don't give up um I feel like all artists have this inner fire to create. And if you have that, you have to express it. Right. I heard this saying once that was um, the urge to create and to it, the equivalent of committing a slow suicide. But I love uh, No, I relate to that one. If you have the, so if you have the urge to create and you ignore it, it's like committing a slow suicide. I, 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 I'm proof of that. I almost, you know, I felt, yeah. I felt that for a long time. So that's fantastic advice. All right. So that's it for um, Lessons Learned by Lindsay. Learn from her lessons. And, um, you know, and thank you for being willing to share what you learned. And, um, and congratulations and welcome to the Making Art, Making Money semester. I'm really looking forward to, I can already see you got a huge warm welcome in the Facebook group. So that's nice. Uh, you're cutting out again, Anne. Sorry oh, so much. If you can hear that's me. Sorry. Right. Anyway, I, what I just said was I wanted to well, I congratulate you for learn by because by learning these lessons, and I wanted to just say it seems like you just got a really big warm welcome the other day in the making art yeah. making money semester oh. Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Anne. Welcome. Thanks.